That's right, guys. Fresh sourdough. With everybody stuck at home, a lot of people have been asking me what is my recipe for sourdough. And it's really kind of a universal recipe. With this pandemic happening and there not being a quick end in sight, I figured I would share with you uh, my methods. And um, yeah, it's actually pretty fun. Once you get a good starter going, you can just like whip up bread in no time. And it's really good. I don't remember the last time we bought store-bought bread except when we were on the road. Let me show you guys first what you're gonna need, then I'll walk you through the process and I'll uh, show you how to bake some bread. Okay, so first things first, you're gonna need a few things. You're gonna need some flour. I've been using whole wheat flour to uh, flavor my loaf, and then the majority of the flour that you use is actually bread flour because it has a higher protein content, which really helps the loaf stay together, let all the gluten uh, interact, and that's when you get like really tight loaves and they get really poofy and hold in all that gas that the yeast is uh, expelling. Next and most important is you're gonna need an active healthy starter, which is just flour and water and takes only about a week to make. I'll walk you through that process here in a second. Some lukewarm water, approximately 650 to 700 grams. Some salt, a kitchen scale, which I have one because of my coffee endeavors, um, but if you don't have one, you can get one and then you can use it for bread and for weighing out your coffee. You'd be cool just like me. You'll need some proofing baskets, this uh, loaf that, or this batch that we're gonna make actually makes two loaves. Um, and usually proofing baskets come in a pack of two. So you need two of those or just use a bowl. Um, you don't need to buy these. Uh, just make sure you have some tea towels on hand to flour. Uh, otherwise the bread will stick to the bowl and then you'll have yourself a mess. So proofing baskets. Get yourself a Dutch oven. These things are sick. Uh, this one's from Lodge. You can get cheaper ones. You can get more expensive ones. I've been really happy with this one. It's like 50 bucks. Yeah, so you bake the bread inside the Dutch oven for 40 minutes total. The first 20 are with the lid on. And what that does is it traps all the steam inside the Dutch oven because conventional ovens are actually made to take moisture out. So this traps in moisture, which prevents the crust from setting and allows it to expand. And that's when you get those cool... Uh, ripples as it breaks apart. So you do the first little bit with it on, then you take it off, and that's what browns it and makes a nice crispy crusty crust. Also, if you don't have a Dutch oven, before I got one, I actually used just a standard skillet. And I would just put a deep dish pot on the top and that would seal in some of the heat. So use a skillet, you just get a matching size pot like this one, and you just put it over the top, balance it over the top, and it worked out pretty well. It is a bit tedious, so I just decided if I was gonna do this, I was gonna buy a Dutch oven. If you only have one Dutch oven or one thing to cook in, it's no problem. You just have to swap the loaves out. One more thing I've been using lately is a heat mat, just because uh, it's a little cool in the kitchen here, especially over the winter and spring. Um, you really do want your starter and your, your uh, main batch of bread to be at about 75 to 80 degrees. And so this just helps keep that temperature up, which keeps everybody happy and keeps the process moving, um, moving along at a good pace. Otherwise, if it's cool, it still happens. It just, uh, takes a lot longer and, uh, we all want bread and we want it now. Uh, we're gonna need a razor blade. This is what you use to score the top of the bread to make those cool artisanal um, lines. All right, so those are the main things I can think of right now. I'm sure I forgot something and I'll add it in and talk about it later. But first and foremost, the most important thing, like I said, is the starter. You need a healthy starter if you're gonna make sourdough. The starter is literally just water and flour. It's equal parts. Um, it's very easy to do. You put it in a Tupperware like so and uh, So in this case you just, if you're starting off 50 grams of flour 50 grams of water stir that together Let it sit overnight the next morning 
um, discard all but two tablespoons of it or so, add more equal parts flour and water to feed it. So another 50 grams of each, um, stir it together. Um, and so that's just going to keep building on itself. You're going to do that for about a week and it's going to double in size over the over the course of the day that's when you know it's good to go the longer you let it sit the more the more sour it gets and what you're actually doing is you're cultivating the natural yeast and bacteria that are in the flour um, those are eating eating the carbohydrates in the in the bread flour producing gas that's what's making it expand um, and that's how you know you've got a healthy starter and once you have a healthy starter then you take that and you make what's called the leaven, which is basically just a bigger starter. Let's say you're ready to make bread. Um, once you have a healthy starter, now you're gonna make a leaven, which like I said, is just a big starter. And what you're gonna do is put it on your scale. You're gonna take the whole wheat flour or rye or you know white whole wheat, whatever you wanna use. It, it's your journey. Then you're gonna add 200 grams. This is for the leaven, folks, which like I said is just a big starter. I usually do this the night before I'm gonna make bread. 200 grams, tear it, equal parts water, so 200 grams, go slow here. All right, 202, that's close enough. Now you're gonna stir it together. All right, so that's the leaven. 200 grams of flour, 200 grams of water, with about two tablespoons of starter and you let that sit overnight that's going to double in size overnight so i'm going to come down for breakfast or coffee in the morning and that thing's going to be all the way up to here that's how we know it's ready to roll and we're ready to make bread the leaven is basically just a big starter as i've said a couple times now it really just ensures that your starter is ready to go and make bread um, this is very important. If you don't have a healthy active starter and a healthy leaven, then do not make bread because it will be a waste of flour. Granted, you will make mistakes, so just pay attention when you are doing this process and maybe take notes. It might help you uh, breach the learning curve a bit sooner. Check it out. Doubled in size. Yes, looking good. That's good, it's looking good. It's risen about double in size. So we're gonna make some bread today. First things first though, coffee. Okay, so before we get into making the loaf, I should tell you that there's some resources you should check out. One is Painted Fork, which is a food blog and Instagram account run by my friend Heather. You can find them, Painted Fork, on Instagram. She does a lot of sourdough, and if you go on her website, she has everything listed out in typing form so that you can quickly reference. And as you can tell here, she's got it She's got it pretty dialed. Doug Sumi turned me on to the Tartine Bakery, or Tartine Bakery, which is a bakery in San Francisco. They also have a really good book. Those are some good resources. I mean, there's a plethora of resources on the internet to check out. Um, and if you have any questions, you should do that because I really don't know what I'm doing. I've just had decent results. So yeah, let's make the loaf. Okay, so tear your bowl. 650 grams of water, warm water. Tear it again. Then take your nice healthy leaven here and uh, 200 grams in the bowl. Check this out. So you know you've got it dialed when it's floating around in the bowl. That means the gluten structure has developed and it's holding in gases and so that's when you know you're good to go so you may be asking well that's not all of it what do you do with the rest and that's a good question so this now is your starter so 
you can go ahead and feed this a little bit and then put it away and then maintain that as your starter. Um, you can also discard it if you want. You can also make sourdough waffles, which is what I usually do with some leftover starter. And I'll put the recipe for that in the video description. Yeah, there's your options. Next is the whole wheat flour. Do I'm gonna do 100 grams of whole wheat flour. If you add more, you can uh, get a more dense, kind of nuttier bread, but this is kind of where I found that I like it, right at 100 grams. I once made the mistake of, instead of using bread flour, I used white whole wheat flour to make the whole loaf, and while it turned out all right, it was super dense because whole wheat flour is uh, much more kind of fibrous and not as fine as bread flour. And so, yeah, it didn't rise a lot. It was pretty dense and, and, and it was still good. It had a lot of whole wheat flavor, but didn't get the, the puff that I wanted. The next is the bread flour. And this is the majority of the flour. So you're looking for a thousand grams total of flour for these two loaves. 100 being the whole wheat, then 900 being bread flour. Okay, now this is my least favorite part because it sticks to your fingers and stuff. So that's why you keep this spoon on hand to scrape your fingers off. But you literally just get in there and stir it all together. You really wanna make sure you incorporate the leaven into everything. All right, once you see no more dry bits of flour, and it's really starting to frustrate you because it's just sticking to your hands. That's when it's about time to call it quits. Take the spoon. All right, that's gonna be our two loaves of bread right there. So this is where the heat map comes in handy. I put the heat map in a deeper or a more sturdy bowl, and then I put this bowl over top of it. This one traps the heat, this one's there, and then just cover it with a towel. So, while we sit here and finish this cup of coffee, we're just waiting. You mixed it all together, now you let it sit in a nice warm spot, and you let it sit for 30 minutes, so set a timer. And then we're gonna add 20 grams of salt and 10 more grams of water and incorporate that. Over the next three hours, you're gonna play with it every 30 to 45 minutes. So you're just gonna take it and scoop up the bottom and put it on top and do that about three or four times per 30 minutes or 45 minutes. And that's really gonna help the gluten structure develop and you're gonna, it's gonna get noticeably different every time you go over there and uh, play with it. Once we get to the end of that process, then we'll plop the dough out on the counter, split it into the two loaves, so we'll split it in half. Then we'll shape it, um, put it in our proofing baskets, let it sit for another three or four hours, then transfer it into the Dutch ovens. We bake them. So now we're just waiting. Okay, it's been 30 minutes. It doesn't look a whole lot different, but we're gonna, we're gonna add the salt and a little bit of water. 20 grams of salt, 10 grams of water. You really wanna incorporate the salt, so make sure you like squeeze it with your fingers and get in there really deep. Okay, 30 more minutes of rest. See, it's already getting different. There's not as many peaks. It helps to wet your hands during this so the uh, dough doesn't stick to it. With a moist hand. This is called turning the dough. Just go under the bottom, stretch it up, flop it down. 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 Stretch it up. All right, look at this. It's time. We're gonna make some loaves. Okay, you're gonna want some flour, and I didn't mention this before, but unbleached is important for everything before this step. 
Bleached flour contains less uh, microorganisms, which could result in some pretty flat bread. Um, and you can use regular bleached all-purpose flour for, th for this because we're just using it to dust everything, but I'm just carrying that mindset through. Proofing baskets, your bench knife to cut the uh, loaves, and also this helps shape them. This is pretty handy. I didn't mention this in the things you need. Um, you should get one, it's nice. If you don't have one, it's fine. You can use your hands. And then some towels to flour. Um, you can put the loaves in the baskets if these are really well floured, but I've had bad luck with that, so I'm just gonna use uh, the towels. Get your workstation all set up here. First thing you're gonna wanna do is get a nice big surface to work with and flour it down, flour this. Don't be afraid to use too much flour here. You really don't want your loaves to stick because then when you try to transfer them to the Dutch oven, they come apart and it's not good. Then you get your dough that's all nice and structured and you just scrape it out. Make sure you get everything off the edges. So that's that. Take your bench knife here, split it right in half. Take this half here. Now what you'll do is make sure you get some flour and you just take it, you spread it out. You just take it, fold it in thirds like this back on itself. Then you roll that up. And now what you wanna do is you wanna take the sides and fold it under to create some tension in the, the dough here. This is what the bench knife is really nice for. You just take it, grab the bottom, and slide it under and turn it. Then you get a nice bit of tension here in the top. Once you get a nice round, then just take it, transfer it to the towel, take the towel, get some flour up onto the top and into the proofing basket. Look at that, perfect. That's ready to sit for a while, so I'll just set this to the side. Same thing with this one. Fold it in, fold it in. There's no exact way to do this. You can leave it like this and then it has like a nice little bread butthole. I said bread butthole. Again, you just wanna create a bit of tension across the top. Once you're satisfied, just take that, go right there, flip some flour up onto it, transfer into the basket. Boom. So these ones are done. Now, they'll sit for three to four hours. They'll get a little bit bigger. Um, and I'm gonna actually sit them over here on the heat mat. just to make sure they stay nice and warm. Now, once I clean this up, I'm gonna go for a bike ride. So that's another thing that you should think about before you just jump right into this. Make sure you think the whole process through just a little bit. That way, uh, you know, you can plan your day around it. You don't have to just sit around waiting on the dough. Lynn just went to Costco. 22. Over 22 loaves. I just don't know where to put it. Ugh. Let's check in on the loaves. Until I got Sherman out of that food bag. Sherman. Sherman. What are you doing in there, man? I got out for a bike ride and got done. It's been about two hours. 215. I still don't know where to put that thing. So we've got some action here. It's definitely a bit more puffy. You see how it's springing back to shape? That's good. That's what we want. It's still not quite ready yet. We're going to let it sit for another hour, hour and a half, and then it's bake time. That's what we're looking for here. Yep. Nice and fluffy, springing back still. It's probably jumped up like 
30% in size, so it's time to bake. Bake set for 500. I know that seems high, but that's where you want it. Here's a pro tip. You gotta have a cookie, cookie sheet on the bottom, and then you put your Dutch oven up here. That prevents the bottom of the bread from being burned. The cookie sheet acts as a heat shield. Okay, so these things have been in here while it's been preheating. I'll put the loaves in one at a time. You need your Dutch oven and some parchment paper. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna flip this onto here, throw it in here, and then, uh, oh yeah. Things are good. And then we'll score it, put the lid on, throw it back in, and do it again. You just have to commit and act fast. See, this is what I'm saying. If you don't flour this enough, you'll have it stick. So it's already sticking a little bit. So before I pull off too much and rip it apart, I'm gonna put it in. So it's now in the Dutch oven. Now, if I go to pull it off and it's sticking some, the side of the Dutch oven will support it. Be careful, take your time. I mean, we're gonna cut the top of this anyway, so some small rips don't matter that much. But yeah, so we got like a little bit of tearing there and a little bit there and there, but that'll look cool. It's artisan, right? What design should we do? Uh, for the option. Anything your heart desires. An E. What? An E. An E? All right. Lowercase or capital? Capital. Okay, there's your E. Okay, so lid on. And now, now we do it again. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this in here before I start taking the towel off, just in case. That one's good. Even get cool design. I'm just gonna do some lines. Okay. So I said 20 minutes before, but I'm actually gonna do it for 30. Um, so 30 with the lid on, and then I'll take the lid off and do it 10 more. Um, for some reason, the status quo is 2020. I actually did 40 by mistake. I forgot to uh, set the timer and uh, forgot about it. And I, I was reminded just in time. And when I pulled the lids off, they were perfect. So I opted to do a little bit longer on the last loaf and I did 30 minutes with the lid on and 10 with it off and it turned out perfect so we're gonna do that again. This is a little bit of a of a science experiment. You have to, once you get comfortable with one thing then you can tweak some things and see how it turns out. All we gotta do is take the lid off. That was 30 minutes, let's check them out. So they should be fully poofed up. From this point on it's just about browning. Oh yeah. Oh, another nice one. That's Emily's E, kind of see it. And that's my lines. So both looking good. At this point, we just want them to get nice and brown and crispy. And I drop the heat to 450 and uh, 10 more minutes. Can you hit that? I got the, okay, this is it. Oh, looking good. That's your E. Ooh. It's nice. actually pretty close. It is. Cool lines. Yeah. We did it. So here's a tip from a video I watched on YouTube when I was trying to figure it out. If you leave it just cracked a little bit while it's, while it's getting back to room temp for like 10 or 15 minutes, it'll help it get super, super crispy. So we'll do that to one, but one we're gonna take out because that means uh, we could eat it faster. It helps if you take it out of the Dutch oven. Uh, prevent the bottom from burning, it'll stop cooking, start cooling down. Now this is probably the hardest part about baking a loaf of sourdough, and it's letting it cool and not cutting into it. It just really helps kind of set the inside. It's very hard and I'm gonna do it 
but probably only for like 10 minutes. Right, Jeremy? Cut it now, man, cut it now. Any preference on how you want me to cut it? Yeah. Pretty dope, huh? Pretty nice. This is called the crumb, just so you, you're in the know. Nice even distribution of air pockets. None too big, none too small. Looks nice and fluffy. Probably should eat a piece, huh? Another reason to let it cool is so that you can cut thinner pieces more easily. Or you get a sharper knife, but I'm not complaining. All that background noise is Emily making something over there and she kicked me out of the kitchen, so. This is my favorite way to eat it. Apparently Penny's pretty into it. Oh, the whole gang's here, great. Nice and crunchy crust. Nice and soft, chewy inside. Nailed it. Okay, so to conclude, most important things, gotta have a healthy starter, like the foundation of a house. That's gotta be number one. Then you gotta wanna think about warm temps, um, just cause it helps the whole process move along more smoothly. And lastly, you're gonna need some patience. You might have a rough go of it at first and your first loaf might not turn out well. So just think back through the process. Think where you might have messed up or something you could change. Um, just think about what's wrong with it. If it's really flat, um, your starter probably wasn't kicking it, so it didn't uh, kind of puff up. The yeast didn't make enough gases. Um, if it's kind of falling apart, maybe you need to let it uh, ferment a bit longer so the gluten can, can get together. There's a lot of YouTube videos out there about this. I don't really know that much but uh, enough to make a pretty decent loaf. Okay, some other things to think about. Play this whole process through in your head. Think of how it's gonna play out throughout the course of your day. So for me, it works to do the 11 at night and then bake the bread the next morning, but maybe for you, you make the 11 in the morning then you get home from work and you make the loaf and play with it and then maybe you let it ferment overnight in the fridge because like I said, you can do that. It slows down the fermentation process and then in the morning before you go to work, you can wake up and bake it. So there's one scenario. So just think about how long things will take and kind of where it would work into your day. I went for a bike ride while mine was doing its final um, fermentation. You can still have fun and bake sourdough. Oh, you can also put your starter in the fridge so you don't have to feed it every day. Once you get a good, healthy starter, um, you can feed it, pop it in the fridge, and then maybe feed it every other day or you know every two days. I've left mine in there for four or five days without feeding it. You just take it out, feed it on schedule again, and it'll, it comes back pretty quick. It's really hard to kill a starter, I think. Lastly, for you more advanced watchers, even I don't mess with this often. I tried it once and it didn't work out great. Mix-ins, like a cinnamon raisin loaf or some sort of herby loaf. You're gonna wanna throw those mix-ins in after you do the final ferment before you put them in the proofing baskets. So back when I was stretching it out over the counter, you uh, stretch it out, put the mix-ins on, fold that together and roll it and then make the tension again. And uh, and then you get your, uh, your mix-ins, so. I think I need to try that some more. I tried cinnamon raisin once and it didn't turn out great. Can't give you any advice there. If you got any questions, write them in the comments below. Send me some pics. Well, good luck. Don't be discouraged if you make some bad loaves. I sure did. Just think the process through and uh, happy baking. Oh man, dad, thanks.